Welcome to Fast Intelligent Care, the podcast for occupational therapists who want to make a real impact. Every Tuesday, we bring you fresh ideas, clear insights, and practical solutions in assistive technology. Let's make smarter, faster, and more effective care simple. Your journey starts now. In today's episode, we'll be comparing different support surfaces when looking at pressure care mattresses. Imagine this. You're working with a client that needs a pressure care mattress. You have multiple options available to you, but which one provides the best support? Do you go for foam, gel, air, or hybrid? How do you choose and how do you balance comfort, cost, and pressure early? Choosing the right support service is critical for pressure injury prevention and management. The wrong choice could mean increased discomfort, heat buildup, or even poor pressure distribution, which could lead to more severe injuries. Today, we're breaking down our two main categories of support services, which is our reactive and active support services. When we look at reactive, they are non-powered and static. This could be our foam, static air, gel, and our non-powered hybrids. And then we have our active support surfaces, which are usually powered. And this is our alternating air and powered hybrids. By the end of this episode, you'll have a good understanding of the different types of support surfaces, the pros and cons, and which one might be the best for your client's needs. So let's go into a little bit more detail on our reactive or static support surfaces. So when we look at reactive support surface, it actually relies on the client's weight and movements to redistribute pressure. It doesn't require electricity, which means it is low maintenance and generally seen as more cost effective. Our most common reactive support service is our foam mattresses. We can think of a memory foam mattress as an example. So our body will sink in or immerse into the mattress and then it will contour around us, which means it envelops us. So this is going to help that we have as much of that body in contact with the support service and we're actually spreading the load and we're decreasing how much pressure is on our body prominences. Next, we'll go into the pros and cons of foam mattresses. So pro is that foam is generally affordable and widely available. It's lightweight and usually easy to customize for different client needs and it's generally minimal maintenance as there's no mechanical parts and no pumps. When you look at the cons of foam mattresses, we find that in some cases, depending on the foam that you're using, it's not always ideal for your microclimate management needs. When we talk about the microclimate, we talk about the levels of moisture and temperature around the skin. Now, if we have a foam mattress like memory foam that generally needs to heat up with the person's body temperature but then retains heat around the body it actually increases sweating and with that sweat around the body the skin is going to be more moist and that's going to be more vulnerable to breakdown which is going to contribute to pressure injuries foam also breaks down over time and loses its resilience and it's not always supportive for heavier weight clients next is our gel mattresses they are the cool and contouring option now imagine a gel-infused shoe insole. It molds around your foot while staying cooler than foam. The pros of gel is that it has better temperature control than foam, which is good for the microclimate management, and it has good contouring for pressure distribution. So we're again, same as foam, increasing that support surface area that's in contact with the body. It also has good shear reduction properties to minimize skin damage. The cons, however, is that it is higher maintenance because it needs to be regularly checked for leaks or breakdowns. And it's generally less immersive than foam, so it doesn't contour as deeply around the body. It's also not best for the microclimate management. So even though we did say that it has better temperature control, it does feel quite cold when you initially get onto the mattress. And it can take a while for that gel to heat up. Next, we have the static air mattress. So this is our non-powered air mattress. And this one you can think of as having a floating effect. So think of an air mattress as a pool float. Great pressure relief, but unstable for movement. The pros of a static air mattress is that it has excellent pressure redistribution properties as air can adjust to the person's body shape. It also can have customizable firmness, which means you can have different inflation levels for different clients. It also has low surface tension and reduces shear forces. The cons, however, is that it's unstable for transfers and clients might struggle to do their sit-to-stand transfers out of bed or also might struggle with doing their bed mobility repositioning in bed as well. Air mattresses are also prone to leaks 
and does require regular maintenance. And it can also have poor microtome management, which can lead to sweating. As you can imagine, that air is trapped within the mattress and there's no airflow, which means that air can heat up and then stay underneath the mattress. And then lastly, we have our hybrid, non-powered mattresses. This could be the best of both worlds. We've already mentioned that our air mattresses are generally unstable for transfers, and we mentioned that our foam is really comfortable, but doesn't always give the most pressure redistribution. So when we can combine these two, that's where we get our hybrid surfaces. So this could be an air foam combination. So the pros of a hybrid mattress is that it combines the stability of foam with the pressure redistribution properties of air. Hybrid mattresses are great for clients that have a progressive condition or clients that have a higher risk pressure injury because this means that they can actually get a more advanced pressure care support surface but they don't necessarily have to have a powered one just at this stage you can get hybrids that are non-powered but have the option of adding on a power source at a later stage when needed it's also ideal for our palliative care clients as it can balance comfort and pressure care the cons of all hybrid mattresses is that it is a bit more complex they can be heavier and could be more expensive than your foam only, gel only, or only static air mattresses. They also have higher maintenance requirements because of the air cell components. And then next we have our second category, which is our active support surfaces. Now the active support surface actively redistributes pressure or relieves pressure using alternating air cells. So there will be a pump involved. These types of support surfaces are really great for clients that have existing pressure injuries or very high risk clients that don't move often in bed. The pros of an active support service like your alternating air or your powered hybrids is that it can support all pressure injury stages from prevention to your stage four. Because it includes your alternating air functionality, it is good for your high risk clients that don't reposition often in bed. So they're getting that pressure relief from the alternating air cells that is giving you loading and offloading. A con of our alternate air mattresses, however, is that it can be more complex, has more setup and maintenance requirements, it can be heavier and pricier than our non-powered surfaces, and in a lot of cases with our alternate air cells, people can feel a bit of a motion sickness feeling from that alternations, especially if it's just a full alternate air, and they can in some cases find the mattress too cold because that pump is drawing in possibly air conditioned cold air underneath the person's body which can cause condensation if their body is warm and that can also increase that moisture around the skin which is going to um, increase breakdown of the skin. Some clients also report finding alternating air mattress pumps very loud and they find that it's difficult for them to sleep and then their sleep quality is affected which results in possibly less mobility, less repositioning. And then it can also contribute to poor pressure relief and contribute to development of pressure injuries. This is where our powered hybrid services come in. So now we don't just have a non-powered hybrid, but we have a hybrid with alternating air cells. Now the benefits of the hybrid with alternating air is that we get the benefits of alternating air, but the foam layer on top of the air cells actually gives more comfort. So it reduces that alternating feeling and also reduces the feeling of coldness as the foam layer will be a bit of a barrier between the person and the air cells. So our alternating air mattresses, whether it's full alternating air or hybrids with alternating air, it's going to give us the highest level of pressure relief for those high risk clients or clients that have a pressure injury. They can also have customizable settings, which means we can have an alternating mode where we have the loading and offloading, and we can have a static mode where the pressure will be equal across the entire mattress and there won't be any alternations, which is a good option if someone is sitting in bed and eating and they don't want to have those alternating cells while they're doing that activity. And you can also have a auto firm or max inflate mode, which is different to your static mode. You could then have a firm stable surface for transfers or for repositioning, or it could be for nurses to assist with dressing changes, or any personal hygiene activities. It can also have different cycle times, so it doesn't always have to be a short cycle. It can be longer cycles, which means the person might not feel the alternations as much. So you might have a client that initially starts on a 25-minute cycle and works down to a 10-minute cycle as they're getting used to alternating air. A con of our full alternating air mattresses 
is that it does require power for the pump to be able to operate, which means if there's a risk of a power outage, then it won't be able to function as usual. We've also discussed previously with the hybrid with alternating air that the noise from the pump can be disrupted to sleep. However, a lot of pumps are made to reduce that noise as much as possible by reducing the vibration of the pump against the foot end of the bed. Our full alternating air mattresses can also be difficult for transfers as it's generally an unstable surface, but this is where your mass inflate mode can come in. And this is a good example of why you might want to look at a hybrid with alternating air as your hybrid will have a firm foam surround for transfers. So just a quick recap of our support surfaces. So we had our foam, which is great for our budget conscious clients. It's affordable, lightweight, low maintenance, but does have heat retention and can break down over time and would usually be seen as a preventative mattress. Then we have our gel mattress, which is for clients that need a cooler surface. It contours well, gives good pressure relief, easy to clean, but does have higher maintenance requirements and less immersion. And then we have our static air mattress, which is like our pool float, which has really good pressure care properties. However, it can be unstable for transfers and can leak. And then we had our non-powered hybrid surfaces, which combined our foam and air, which had the stability and comfort of foam, but the advanced pressure care properties of air. And then we had our powered hybrids, which combines foam and alternating air cells, which gives us advantage pressure care for this clients with existing pressure injuries. And lastly, we have our alternating air mattress, which is going to give us the highest level of pressure relief ideal for high-risk clients and clients that have an existing pressure injury, but usually more for bed-bound clients that don't reposition often and receive assistance for repositioning, and it can be an unstable surface for transfers. So we've seen that each mattress type has its strengths and weaknesses. Which support surface do you use most often? Have you ever tried a hybrid mattress? And let us know your thoughts in the comments on the different types. Thanks for joining us on Fast Intelligent Care. We'll hope you're leaving with fresh insights and tools to make a real impact as an occupational therapist. If you've got questions or topics you'd like us to cover, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and join us every Tuesday for more ideas and strategies to deliver smarter, faster and better care. Until next time, keep making a difference.